Hello, all. Uh, we're just going to give it a, a minute or two to kind of let people uh, join in, filter in here. Uh, and then, then we'll uh, begin here uh, momentarily. Uh, so just hold on. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. We'll just give it another like 30 seconds to a minute uh, and then uh, we'll begin here. Uh, okay. I think we'll just begin and then we can let people filter in as needed. But um, so thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Ryan Anderson. I am the outreach manager with Kendall at Home. Uh, with me today, uh, kind of behind the scenes, is Sue Wyken. She is the marketing and events coordinator, and she'll be uh, uh, monitoring the behind the scenes technical stuff. Uh, there's Sue. Uh, she'll be monitoring the behind the scenes technical stuff uh, for us all today. Uh, and looking at the Q&A in the chat box as well. If you have any questions, feel free to type those in there and we'll get to those at the end. Uh, our special guest today probably doesn't require an introduction, um, but for those who don't know, today with us, we have Jennifer Brush. Uh, Jennifer is an award-winning author, educator, researcher in the area of dementia care, and she'll be discussing the Montes Montessori philosophy uh, with us today. So Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us today, and we're, we're really looking forward to, to hearing this. Thank you. It's good to be here again. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, you know, we've been focusing on brain health during this series and talking about prevention and diagnosis and some interventions. And today I want to share with you something that's really unique um, to me and uh, the work that I do around the world. And that is helping care communities to implement a Montessori philosophy. Um, this is a way for elders to really be engaged in life in a very meaningful way. Um, it's certainly not just for people with dementia. Uh, the Montessori philosophy is good for all of us at all ages. Um, I serve on the International Advisory Board for the Association Montessori International. Um, and I am the only certified trainer by the Association Montessori International um, for this in the United States. I'm, I'm one of two trainers of trainers uh, in the world um, for this philosophy. And then I direct a program at St. Nicholas College um, for Montessori education for dementia. So I thought it would you might be interested in learning about it today and um, hearing what I do. Um, learning about what Montessori is. Some of you may, heard of, may have already heard about it for kids, but not be familiar with this philosophy as it's applied to um, older adults. Um, and so I'm gonna take the time today to, to share that with you. So first of all, Montessori is a very person-centered approach. Um, it focuses on engaging the person in life in a very person-centered way. So it's 
person-centered care in general is focused on soliciting and honoring people's preferences, on returning the control about daily decision-making um, to the person or the patient, in this case, the older adult. Um, it's about creating a culture of aging that is inclusive, that's life-affirming, and that's satisfying. So when I work with long-term care organizations, our goal is to build communities where elders can really continue to make meaningful contributions to their community. It's not about um, being waited on and having everything taken care of for you. Um, it's about being able to do things for yourself. Um, we do that by creating collaborative relationships um, with the elder, by respecting everybody's abilities. And we also pay close attention to the social and physical environment. So one thing that we'll be talking about today is something that we call the prepared environment. You know, why do um, older people need or people with dementia need a slightly different environment? We've talked in previous brain health series about creating a home environment that's supportive. Um, some of the sensory changes that we experience as we age and why we need a special environment. And we'll talk about how we use that evidence-based research to create a person-centered Montessori environment. We also do very thorough person-centered assessments with the, with the individual. So we're gathering a very thorough history of the person, if it's in a care community before they move in, if we're working some, with someone in the home, certainly we're still collecting a very thorough history because we wanna learn about the person um, as much as we can and share the information with the rest of the care team. And then our goal is to use that information to help us know how the person wants to spend their time um, and then to help them engage in things that are very meaningful. Okay? One of the things that we focus on are life roles. So a role is a purpose that we have in a situation, an organization, in a relationship. And if you think about your roles through your life, the roles that you have now, okay, uh, the typical week and all the different things that you do, um, we wear many different hats or have many different roles. And we often describe ourselves according to the roles that we have. So if you meet someone at a party, for example, they might say to you, well, what do you do? Okay, what, what's your role in life, right? So if, if I think about my different roles, I'm a teacher, I'm a mom, and with a mom comes all sorts of different roles. I'm a, a chauffeur, I'm a house cleaner, and a dishwasher, and a cook, and a counselor. Um, I'm a volunteer, I'm a caregiver, I'm a spouse. Um, I'm a leader, so I have a whole variety of roles in my community, my job, my family. Very often, when I work with care communities and I ask them, what are the roles of people living in your community who have dementia? They have a hard time thinking of roles. They think of things that are very passive there are often not a lot of opportunities for people to continue to contribute. And so part of my job is to show communities how to set up the environment to be supportive of roles. And even in a home setting, we want people to continue to contribute to the home um, for as long as they're able to. It, it, they may be contributing in a different way than they did before but they have so much to give and to be able to contribute. So here's a woman who's leading a reading group and reading to other people. She has dementia and she's reading to other individuals who also have dementia. This person's helping to keep the environment clean and tidy. They're folding laundry instead of the staff folding laundry. The residents gather to fold the laundry for the day making their own beds, instead of having someone from a housekeeping come in and make them, um, passing out food at meals, um, getting something for yourself. Part of a role is being able to take care of yourself, um, helping somebody else or contributing to the community. 
So whether that's getting yourself a cup of coffee or a bowl of soup, um, folding laundry that's used in the community, um, taking care of the plants in the community, arranging flowers that go on the table um, to make the community beautiful, um, setting the table. These are all important ways to be able to continue to contribute. And sometimes we need to give people um, some, some assistance by giving them templates or visual cues um, that may help them to be more independent in maintaining those roles. So before I talk any further, I wanna take a, a few minutes to talk to you about what Montessori is um, and give you an opportunity to learn about what Montessori is for children so you can um, have an idea first about how we apply that to older adults. So I have a, a short video from the Association Montessori International that um, I'd like to show you first. Help me to do it myself. Uh, that is the, really the essence of Montessori education. I'm Carolina Montessori, one of Maria Montessori's great granddaughters. She was born in 1870 in Keravalle, Italy. She was the only child of Alessandro Montessori and Renil de Stoppani. Her mother uh, was an elementary school teacher, but of course stopped working um, when she married and probably wanted her daughter to do all the things that she had not been able to do. And he said, you can't study medicine, women don't do that. And uh, she said, well, I know that I shall be a doctor. She was the first woman to finish her studies at the University of Rome, medical studies. She pleaded for equal uh, pay for women, which was ex very extraordinary in those days. She was very eloquent and that she could speak very convincingly. She was particularly interested in the psychiatric um, department. She found um, that, um, that there were children who were there, locked up in a big ward. The nurse said, oh God, they eat crumbs from the floor. They have no manners. And Maria Monsoy said, no, they have nothing to do. They need sensory stimulation. These children performed sometimes better than the children who had, had regular uh, traditional education. I think she thought that she was onto something great. It was so exceptional um, what these children could do. These children were capable of um, great discipline, order, care for one another, care for themselves, and um, also they're very eager to learn. So she really saw a new kind of child. The Montessori approach is based on providing a prepared environment for children, so made to measure, where um, they can learn by themselves with very little guidance from the teachers. She saw how children suffered in, in, those, in the traditional kind of schools. At that time, children were seen as small adults, so they had to behave as adults. And of course they weren't. The whole idea of social justice and human rights, it's ingrained in her method. It's respect for each other, uh, respect for nature, respect for the universe, for our world. Uh, it's all in there. She 
you see many, many honors uh, and awards. But of course, the most honorable thing is that she was nominated three times for the Nobel Peace Prize. So Dr. Montessori was a, really an amazing woman who was way ahead of her time and created a learning environment for children that facilitated their independence. And I just want to briefly review the components of a Montessori community for children because we use these same key components in our philosophy as we work with older adults. So it's helpful to have an understanding about where these come from. So Montessori classrooms are made up of children of different ages and interests and abilities. Um, a traditional classroom in a public school or even a private school would be separated by grade. Um, and in Montessori, they're grouped according to what we call a plane of development in an age group of three. So you may have six, seven, and eight-year-olds in a classroom together, and nine, 10, and 11-year-olds in a classroom together. So that there, uh, and that there's a mix of children and the older students serve as role models to the younger students. So there's a lot of collaborative learning um, that takes place. The environment is specifically prepared so that children can be independent in their learning and their exploration. All of the classroom materials are available at any time for the students to be able to go and choose and work on very hands-on materials. So they learn new concepts by, by experiencing and by doing, instead of having someone um, you know, talking to them. And they're multi-sensory experiences. They start by think with things that are very concrete and they move to things that are very um, abstract. Um, I'm a Montessori child. My daughter was a Montessori child for 10 years. She attended Montessori school. This is one of the very first works that I remember doing. It's called a dressing frame. Um, and it's helping the child learn the skills for buckling that will help um, the child to be able to dress and do other um, things. The children are naturally driven um, toward achieving independence. So we really step back. Um, we try not to offer assistance or interrupt them while we're working because we actually see that as an impediment to their growth. We let them work on the, with the materials and figure out how um, to do things. Now, of course, they're given lessons and demonstration. They're not just given a piece of material with no instruction, but we're really, our goal is really um, to have them experience the, the things on their own. There's a lot of movement in the Montessori classroom. Kids can move around, they can go in and out, they can choose things that are interesting, and they all have roles in caring for the community. Um, which also helps to um, facilitate their independence and their self, good self-esteem. They're given a lot of freedom and they're also given responsibility. And so you'll see real glass in the classroom. And if something gets knocked over, if it breaks, it's okay. It, cleaning it up is viewed as a learning um, opportunity for the person. And we know that kids are born with an intrinsic motivation and desire to learn. So they don't need things like stickers or grade or candy to motivate them. They're interested in learning about things. So we encourage them to follow their own interests, to be able to meet their own needs. And the classroom has lessons for, of grace and courtesy where children are taught through modeling the basic skills and social strategies that help them to function as part of the community. And it's the role of the adult then to model these behaviors for the children. 
The Dr. Montessori said to never help a child with a task at which he feels he can succeed. And we carry that through um, to working with older adults and people with dementia as well. Because none of us really, if you think about it, want to um, have to be dependent on others. We want to be able to take care of ourselves um, for as long as possible. We want to be able to remain in our home and remain active. And so if you look at the components of a Montessori community for children, and then you look at the Montessori components of a community for older adults, these are the same types of things. We have uh, elders with a variety of skills and abilities and interests living and working together in an environment that we set up to be prepared. There's a variety of hands-on activities that encourage independence. We know how important movement is for the brain. Right? People are given the freedom to choose what they would like to do. And we're always gracious and um, courteous at all times as we interact with one another. We have specially designed materials that are very inviting and attractive that people enjoy um, working with. And they're specially designed to have a control of error, which means that there is um, the material is designed in such a way that it shows the person his mistakes, so he is able to correct them without assistance. So they really um, encourage, again, independent work with the materials. And our materials and our environment take into account something that Dr. Montessori called human tendencies. So you can think of human tendencies. I, I like to think of them as needs, actually, that we all have. And in order to experience well-being, these needs have to be met. But we know through working with people with dementia, through the research that's been done in the area of dementia, that people who have cognitive impairment need some special considerations in the environment in order for these needs or human tendencies to be addressed because of the changes that have happened in their brain. So let me give you some examples about the way that we really use this philosophy um, to help support people who have cognitive impairment. So we all have the need to feel oriented. These human tendencies are the same for all of us in any culture at any age. Um, so we all have the need to be oriented. We want to know where we're going. We want to know how to get back, right? None of us, I don't think, enjoy the experience of, of being unsure about that or being lost or needing to use the bathroom and not being able to find it, right? That's a very unsettling um, feeling. So, but the problem is that cognitive mapping that ability to have a visual representation of where you are in space, of how to get someplace and how to get back, is impaired very early on um, in dementia. So people need special cues to support the memory systems that are impaired. Um, one thing that I'm particularly interested in is the design of signs um, and wayfinding cues for people with dementia. I'm actually working on a, a large five-year National Institutes of Health grant right now where we're studying how people with dementia find their way and the type of cues that are best. So I design very high contrast, concrete signage and imagery um, to help people with dementia to find their way. We also all have the need for order when our environment is ordered, we're able to have internal order and process information better. So in a Montessori environment, everything is visually organized. There's a place to any materials that people might need. Nothing is put away in cabinets or locked up. Everything is out so people can access it and use it and explore it because we all have a need for ex exploration and manipulation. So we have engaging uh, things to do that involve all of the senses. 
And at some times we place special signage in the environment also that will encourage someone to um, engage with the materials. We spend a lot of time training staff on effective communication techniques for people with dementia um, because communication is impaired in people who have cognitive impairment. And when you experience communication impairment, you also experience a loss of control over your world. It becomes very difficult if you can't share ideas or ask for help or express opinions. So we use, um, we do a lot of language-based activities that will help older adults and people with dementia to be able to continue to communicate. And we have a variety of materials all over the living environment. People can choose to work together. They can choose to work on their own. They can do things whenever they'd like. They can work on something for five minutes and put it away and get something else. They can work on something for two hours if they want. It's totally up to them. And they're doing this in a prepared environment, in an environment that is set up so that the person can be as independent as possible. So it's an environment that's beautiful, that supports um, memory impairment, that offers different spaces for different activities. And we learned during COVID that we were very much able to enhance individuals' well being and keep people safe because we had already in the communities individualized areas that were individualized where people could work on different projects at different tables and stations, all and work areas, all throughout the community and also with personalized activities in their room. Um, also a lot of outdoor things, planting, sweeping, weeding of outdoor spaces. So um, although it was an extremely challenging time when all of the care communities were closed to visitors, the communities that I work with that had Montessori in place, really the elders living there continued to thrive and be engaged and have interesting things to do. So I was very happy to see that. We encourage a lot of movement. We make sure that people have opportunities to engage in those roles that they had at home. So if someone wants to vacuum their apartment, they're able to do that. People are able to um, wipe the tables, sweep the floors, dust, set the table, help to permit, prepare meals, anything that they would like to do. We want them to use their fine motor skills, their gross motor skills, their balance, um, anything to keep people up and moving um, is a big part of our philosophy. And you know, if you've attended other brain health seminars, how important exercise and movement is for the brain. We also bring the outdoors in. We have beauty in the environment and we encourage frequent access to the outdoors. We try and make sure that people are engaging with real adult materials and not things that look like toys or childlike materials. We have materials that are organized according to um, themes. And so people can choose from a variety of things. We have um, pouring activities that help them work on their skills to be able to continue to pour drinks for themselves or for others. We have plant care activities. We have different sewing, embroidering act activities that meet individualized um, individuals' interests and help them to maintain their skills and abilities. And all of the tools that they need um, to be able to do these things are always out in the environment so they can be active. We don't put them away um, and keep them locked up and so that people have to ask staff or that staff have staff decide when someone can do something. Um, it's really um, very organic. The Montessori isn't a time of day. It's something, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of life. 
It happens from the time someone wakes up in the morning until the time that they go to bed. They have that freedom to choose and the opportunity to be engaged. Um, and there's an emphasis on compassion and empathy for others and lots of opportunity to do things together and to build and maintain relationships. So when I work with a community, I also train the volunteers and the families so that everyone understands what this philosophy is and that the, it really helps the families to have better relationships uh, with their loved ones. Um, it gives them things that they can do that are meaningful when they visit. And when we decorate the environment, we do our best to have the environment reflect what's done in the space. So if this, if this is one community where I work, this is a music room, and this is part of the decor in the music room. So when someone is coming into this room, they are immediately um, have are cued or are able to see and hear, feel, smell, um, things that are associated with that activity that are done in the room. And that also helps with their um, sense of orientation. We want people to choose to do the things that they love. So if they're interested in nature and plants, they have free access to the outdoors to do those types of things. Staff work with them one-on-one -on -one, or the elders work together in small groups. And I have some examples here of a prepared environment from a new building um, that is being built. It's just about finished in South Carolina called Somerville. It's part of the Presbyterian communities of South Carolina. And they're building a wonderful Montessori community for elders um, from the ground up, which is the best way to do it instead of bringing it into an existing community, which is what we often do. Um, this community has lots of beautiful uh, outside space, both shaded and sun with things to do, um, places to sit. El elders have access whenever they'd like to go outside. They have opportunities to care for themselves by doing laundry and other household chores in well-designed rooms that are right there on, in the household and available to them. So anybody can come in here and do their laundry or have help doing their laundry at any time. They can fold it. There's a place to hang things, places to sit. And at this community, the, how, the kitchen is very much the center of the home. Just like at our home, people gather around the kitchen. We have opportunities here for people to cook together, for people to, families to join in, for people to watch while things are being cooked or to sit at the counter and have a snack. And so there's this wonderful, nice access to a great space um, where people can be together. There's also a lot of attention to orientation cues for wayfinding. So different areas of the household are painted different colors and we have um, door frames and doors and handles and fixtures that contrast from the wall. So they stand out easily, people can see them. We have nice, large, clear room signs so people can find their room by seeing their name in large print, but not only that, a very nice large picture of themselves that they choose and that they recognize. Um, so that assists in wayfinding also. And you'll see we've gotten rid of these big long hallways with all of these rooms off of them. There's just a nice big central open living area with small little groupings of pods so it's very easy for people to find where they live, but also when they come out of their room, they're not wandering around trying to find things. They can see the living space immediately as they leave their rooms. This is one of the, the community living areas. There are slanted shelves in the, 
on the bookcase. So books can be displayed with the covers facing forward so people can see what they are. They can access materials. The environment is very nicely lit. It's a nice social space where people can sit together. They can work on things themselves. They can work on things with partners or with family when they visit. And they can do activities of their choice. So we look at the interests of the people living in the community and we help match activities that we know are going to be meaningful to them. So for somebody who enjoyed carpentry or woodworking or maybe being a handy at home, um, we can put together a variety of nuts and bolts activities, toolbox organizing and sorting, screwdriver activities, and these help with hand and eye coordination. They help with visual spatial skills, their fine motor skills, um, sequencing, attention to task, a variety of, of skills that we want people to be able to maintain for long periods of time. And the materials are all accessible on a shelf and label so somebody can go at any time and be able to access the materials. Um, while they, during COVID, when the communities were locked and not allowing visitors, um, our team put together a variety of personalized memory baskets um, so that people could have familiar items um, to them from home um, that they could, could engage in and reminisce about. I like this activity here because it's very multi-sensory. We have shells that are a variety of shapes and sizes and textures. This activity was designed for someone who really enjoyed going to the beach. That was something that she talked about often. And so we have pictures of the shells and the actual shells that the individual can then match and handle and talk about a lot of these activities are also very easy um, to do in someone's room. And so if a person can have a variety of personalized activities in their room instead of in the common areas of, of the community. And you'll see all of these things that, that we do as part of the um, engagement plan are certainly things that can be done at home. You can easily set up a table for somebody to work on different activities. This is uh, an activity called three-part cards. It's a Montessori language-based activity, and it helps people to maintain their reading ability, um, their naming ability. They also work on sequencing and attention to task and fine motor skills. So all of our activities have a variety of purposes and benefits for the elder. They're not just busy work. Um, this is an embroidery activity. And all of the Montessori activities are what's called self-contained. So that the person has a tray or a basket or a container with everything they need right there to do the activity. So in those boxes, there are, there are little embroidery scissors and threaded needles and a variety of different types of embroidery floss to choose from. Everything's there that they need to be able to complete the activity independently. This is an activity called metal insets. It's a fine motor activity. Children use it for pre-writing skills. It's also a creative art activity. Um, it becomes actually, it's one of my favorite activities. It's very meditative to do. Um, and this is something popular, very popular um, for people to work on. We also have specialized reading material. Um, I collaborated on a project with a company called Montessori Images and the um, owners of the company, Rita and Ron Aikens, um, Rita is a, a Montessori teacher and Ron is an illustrator. And we created and tested a series of books for people who have cognitive impairment 
they are all intergenerational stories with an older adult and a grandchild or a younger person where they're having um, some kind of experience uh, together. And they're all very large print. They're adult stories. They are not kids books. Um, they have nice high contrast graphics. And then they have at the end of every page, there's a question to prompt discussion um, with the person um, about the story. It helps to um, get conversation going, but also to reinforce the material um, that they have um, read. So just to, to summarize uh, what I've presented so far, we are really taking the time to get to know the person. We're assessing their needs and their interests and abilities because this is a person-centered approach. And we're placing an emphasis, especially when working with people with dementia, on familiar tasks that they can be successful with. Uh, we're providing engaging activities and roles that are meaningful. We want to focus on supporting independence by making sure that the environment is set up properly and offering choice all throughout the day. Um, we work with the person to demonstrate these activities and materials one component at a time. We practice with them, so we make sure that they're successful. And the materials that we use are beautiful. Every, we want the environment and the materials to be attractive. So, I am going to make sure that I save time for questions in just a minute or two here. But what I want to do is share with you a video of a community that I work with in Pennsylvania. Um, and they're sharing their experience about what it was, what it's like to implement the Montessori philosophy in their care community. This really is a story about helping older adults live an abundant life. And that's one of the wonderful things about our mission is it's to give elders the opportunity to live an abundant life wherever they call home. In the Pazment community, we believe that aging is a gift and that life can be rich and rewarding at any age and with individuals living with dementia. And we had the wonderful opportunity to partner with Jennifer Brush who introduced to us the pioneering principles of Dr. Maria Montessori and the Montessori philosophy. And following the guidelines established by the Association Montessori International for Montessori for Dementia and Aging. You may have heard about the Montessori approach for children. Students in Montessori schools learn in a multi-age community with freedom of movement and choice, exploring and learning at their own pace with hands-on materials. All of these elements apply beautifully to an adult care community. Montessori is a philosophy of life that gives older adults the opportunity to grow, engage, love, and most importantly, live. So how have we created a Montessori environment for elders? Jennifer would best be able to describe how we've made the Montessori philosophy come alive for elders at Pazman. We've designed activities and materials that match each individual's cognitive abilities and their interests. So you'll see elders engaging in all aspects of daily life here at Passivant. Some choose to arrange flowers, water the plants, tend the garden, fold laundry. These are roles and activities that have meaning and that have purpose. Jack and Emma worked our sanding and varnishing the windseeker to perfection. They can go to uh, the area that they prefer to and uh, participate in folding or um, lacing. Go down and uh, prepare flowers for a basis. Do you ever have a flower garden? Oh, sure. You used to grow orchids, correct? Yeah. It has given my mom continued purpose in her life. She is living her life and she's active and enjoying and engaged. It gives you a sense of peace knowing that your loved one, your mother, your father, whoever is here just is not just existing, living their life to the fullest. 
We encourage our elders to be as independent as possible, simply by having water set up on, this, on the table with glasses they can serve themselves, get their own food, as well as help others who aren't able to do so. We have beverages and snacks always available 24 seven for a resident in our dining area. They're kept in the exact same location so that they can find them and they can help themselves at any time. Montessori materials progress from simple to complex. Care partners offer choices and show by demonstrating. Visual aids are provided to allow elders with cognitive impairment to achieve success. Montessori materials have real uses and allow elders to contribute to their community. You're going to match the screw to the hole that it fits into and try to screw it in there for me. We call it the sports club and it's where the men can go in and uh, do uh, those golf balls, things with fishing, nuts and bolts, uh, their sports things. Well, I made up a fashion corner with uh, the ladies where they can try on jewelry and hats, which ladies enjoy very much. Activities and roles happen during the normal course of the day, just like they would if the person was living in their home. The result is a relaxed flow during which some people are doing activities on their own and other people may be working in small groups. Montessori isn't confined to a specific time of day. It's truly a way of life. Before, I had a lot of group activities. You know, a lot of them participated, but there were also some that would participate that really wasn't their interest. So when we started to implement the Montessori, the elders now enjoy uh, doing the, the materials and more things that they like on their time. So wash the whole plant, that's great. Get all the bugs and everything off of it, huh? <laughs> With the Montessori approach, it's fantastic because she's just a different person. And it happened immediately for my mom. I know it's not like that always for everybody, but for my mom, it was an immediate, um, different person. She became the person that I remember my mom being because they've made this feel like it is her home. Once they realized what her niche was, which obviously is cleaning and prepping and things like that, that is what they directed her towards. So she enjoys making her bed, making it perfect, all things that she loves to do. The household is organized and uncluttered. Everything has a place and is labeled. So on our household, we've added some brightly colored, high contrast signs, and those allow the residents to be invited to do an activity, maybe from a recreation standpoint, like placing or doing three-part cards. It also invites them to be engaged in the life of the household so that they're actively a part of their day, that might be folding the laundry or setting the table. Passivent provides a prepared environment for older adults. Wayfinding cues such as signage and landmarks are provided for all destinations. All signage is designed with concrete imagery and maximized color contrast. One of the ways that we help the residents find their way around is there's a large photo of each one of them on their apartment door. This helps them to recognize themselves and find their way into their own room. And the wonderful thing about Abundant Life is that it is truly unique for each individual. So what's Abundant Life for me isn't going to be what's Abundant Life for somebody else. And the, the starting point for that really is about relationship and to get to know them as a person. And when we do that, then we're better able to equip them to be engaged fully in their life. We encourage persons to bring their things from home because this is their home. In our rooms that our residents reside in, their space has to reflect their journey. So you bring to your new home things that you've had when you're packing up, you bring them here. Your favorite lamp or your favorite dresser or your favorite pictures and photographs of your family. Those are all important because they can identify that with who they are. With memory loss, sometimes we can't easily retrieve the name. When we have the name tags right there in a, in a color that helps us um, see them easily, they can begin a relationship. Hi, Joe. Sure. How are you doing? <laughs> They've got name tags for all of the, the residents. 
because earlier nobody talked by name to everybody around the table. They didn't know their names or couldn't remember. And so with the name tags, you know, they, they would say, hi, Bill. We would talk by first names, which made it, which made it very nice. Family members also assist us in creating a memory book for every elder in the community. Memory books serve as an important reference tool for elders, as well as a conversation starter for care partners and visitors. Oh, there I am. See me. See me's in the Navy. In the Navy. Must have been very good here, Bill. It's amazing to see how the elders enjoy their memory books. The changes have always been for the better, but this change is a change that, that creates a light in some of our elders and, and makes them feel as if they're, they're living again. Yeah, I think it's given them a sense of peace because this disease is horrible but it's allowing them instead of sitting all day or working and being frustrated and fearful it just gives them again that purpose back it was a pleasure to come into a household where you see the participants smiling and engaging in all of the activities and thoroughly enjoying life they are truly engaged in the program and they just they love it and Every day they'll ask you what they can do to help. So it makes them feel like they have a purpose. And that is, it is a real, real comfort to a family member to see someone who, even though has stages of dementia and continues to progress, is still living her life. And it is, it's the purpose that is all, is the most meaningful to me. We believe in empowering people to live an abundant life. The Montessori philosophy helps us all to live our lives to the fullest extent possible. So I hope that, that you enjoyed watching that. Um, as I mentioned in the video and in this presentation, this isn't an intervention. It's really a philosophy of life. And Dr. Montessori's philosophy encompasses beliefs, concepts, and attitudes that empower elders um, at any age at, or any capability. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and open this up for any questions that anyone might have. Um, if you don't want to type them in the chat, but you prefer just to unmute yourself um, and ask and talk to me, that's fine. Um, whatever you prefer. Yeah, Jennifer, as people uh, type away in either the Q&A or the chat, feel free. Um, Jennifer, first off, thank you so much. This is so interesting. I'd always heard of Montessori in the framework uh, of children, but to hear it in the context of older adults and to, to help people uh, there and with dementia, it, it put it into a new perspective for me. Um, so it, it was very cool to hear that and also to see um, how it gives people that sense of dignity back again and to, to really work through it from even just as you said earlier like uh folding clothes and making the bed and stuff like that like simple things it doesn't have to be a huge undertaking to it so um, yeah, that's right and it's definitely not sometimes when people hear that we use Montessori with older adults they think that we're treating adults like children and that is never ever the case it really is about dignity and about independence so mm -hmm. I think we have a question here. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So someone had come in a little late, but um, I was asking like if this is available to members of the Kennewood Home Community, can you like spend a day or part a day uh, in centers like these? What's 
So that community that you saw the video from is in the Pittsburgh area. So it's not here, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so no, there's not an easy access to, um, I don't have a community right here in Cleveland that you could have easy access to. Yeah, it is something though that um, we'd be, or, uh, open to pursuing to try and see if that's something that members are interested in and looking at more too. It's something that we can can always try and see how we can uh, apply it to, to members and help there. Um, exactly. It's definitely, you know, all of the care coordinators have been through training about Montessori. And um, we certainly have Mary Ann, who is um, working with me collaboratively on engagement with the members. And so if any members are interested in having um, access to um, learning about Montessori or Montessori materials in their home, we can definitely help, certainly help them with that. And I think Katie, you're raising your hand. You have something to say? Yes, this is Katie, one of the care coordinators. And I do want to say, you know, it, it showed community living and facility-based care, but how we translate this into home is we work with the provided caregivers through the different agencies we work with. We also work with family care partners, um, spouses, loved ones, other family members, friends on strategies that can help with those that have dementia. Sometimes we meet as a group with the entire team of care providers around an individual so we can help facilitate these different strategies. Um, one thing that all of the Kendall at Home uh, members will have done or will be doing is an interest and in activity inventory. And it may be something that you say, why would we do this? Why do you need to know this? Well, this is important for care planning down the line. What did you like to do? What did you used to do? What do you still enjoy doing? Because that example in the video was that her mom liked to clean, kind of made me giggle because my, my mom loves to clean too. It hasn't rubbed off so much on me, but, but if my mom ever got to that point, I know to provide a broom because good Lord, does that woman love to sweep? Those are her interests that make her feel valued. That's something she enjoys, the physical activity of, the, um, the cleaning of her environment, her connection with that. That's something where you're grabbing on to people's interests. If you're gonna ask them to do a paint by number and they've hated art their whole lives, you're, you're engaging them in something that is not what they are used to doing nor interested in doing. So it translates very, very much so into a one-on-one -on -one setting in, an, in someone's own home and how we can help facilitate that through the care providers that we work with. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Um, well, I'm not seeing anything else in the chat. If anyone else has anything, please, please feel free. Thank you, Katie, uh, by the way, too, for, for bringing that up there. Um, Jennifer, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this presentation with us. It, it was amazing. Um, and, and looking forward to, uh, future episodes in the series. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thanks everybody for being here and I'll see you again next month. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you all.